Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word and in the Forgiving Challenge. We're in the last day of really speaking towards restoration, although it isn't the last day, day 33. Um, it's a ongoing process as we get to see that God is fully restoring us, not just for the future, not just for our heaven-bound reality, but for our everyday walk. And that's what he did for Peter, and that's what he can do for you and me as his disciples. I want to give a quick shout out. So I got to wear this shirt. Um, Owls today in the Elite Eight. How beautiful that is. Uh, FAU chair them on tonight um, as they face Kansas State. But uh, uh, what amazing thing is to be in the community. Um, not quite in that community. How beautiful it is. It looks like a fake background um, behind me, but how beautiful it is to be able to uh, step outside of the office uh, with the family and being able to have some rest, relaxation, and restoration as we get to have that restoration bringing us back to a place that we can actually just walk forward in that's what jesus does to peter uh continually in that chapter of 21st chapter of john um we're not in there we're actually in philippians chapter one because i want to just really kind of speak to what paul speaks to but what he gets to hear from peter um because he says some things in this epistle that is just like mind-blowing i think um and that's really what day 33 is about, fully restored of not even fearing death. Actually, death being the freedom as we walk forth in the full restoration of Christ. Because these words, after Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He ends with this, as Zach is put in this devotion, to be able to speak towards the fulfillment of what Peter even said to Jesus. I will even die for you. I will not disown you didn't keep his word, denied him three times, and Jesus meets him on that shoreline, forgives him three times, restores him, but then calls him into that restoration with those two incredible words that he gives to Peter and that he gives to you and me, and that is, follow me. Not follow me when you get to heaven, but follow me now in the walk of faith. And it's pretty amazing as Paul picks this up in Philippians, he's kind of inheriting this from Peter, of being able to say that Peter was going to Jesus, uh, pr uh, professed and prophesied, I should say, um, that he would die for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Jesus' name. And Peter did just that. And so did every other disciple except the Apostle John. But as we get to see here, all they were doing was the full obedience and walk of follow me. Follow me. Yeah, it's going to mean implications for our life. It's going to mean some hardships or maybe some suffering sometimes. Um, but the reality towards that is where else shall we go? You have the words, you have the way to everlasting life. Where else would I follow? What else would I follow? And that's the battle that we continue to, uh, to walk forward in and being able to say, man, what a battle it is. What are we following in our every day? We pray that it's Jesus as we're fully restored, forgiven children and be able to walk in this way. So that's why we have uh, day 33, what a challenge it is to memorize scripture, but I'm going to go to a different scripture. I want you to open up to Philippians chapter 1. As Paul, like I says, inherits um, this kind of reality of the walk of death, but even death not being a fear. Not, actually, death being able to be seen as a freedom, freed from the chaos and the sin of this world, um, but freed from the implications of this world that I would actually, my mind and my heart is devoted and set towards following Jesus no matter what, fully restored. Verse, uh, Philippians chapter 1, beginning at verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. And where Paul is right now is like enslaved. What happened to me throughout these cities as he's going on these missionary journeys, um, suffering and persecution and throwing out of cities. But he says, what, what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Um, within our suffering, people are going to ask the questions, how can they... How can they uh, continue to go on in that? The strength of Jesus, the strength of God. And so that's what he's saying here. It, this is really served to advance the gospel. There, it, it's just a nonsense that we would actually continue to go or continue to walk within suffering. But we have Jesus walking alongside of us. As a result, it says in verse 13, it has become clear throughout the whole palace garden to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter to do 
do so in love, knowing that I am in, that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me and uh, while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, I will continue, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now as always Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Let me say that again. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Paul, being a persecutor of the church, forgiven by Jesus, encountered by Jesus, and then being able to be brought into the apostleship with the other apostles, knew that the highest calling in their life was to be in Christ. Now, of today, our highest calling in life isn't what we're doing or who's around us, but rather just to follow Christ, knowing that we are fully restored. Come what may in this world. I'm not asking it to come, because <laughs> there's a lot of crazy things that can happen in this world, but come what may. I am in Christ. I am fully restored in Christ. And he is leading me down the path. Even through suffering, it produces perseverance, character, hope, all those incredible things that Paul puts to the uh, Christians in Rome. But he also says that to you and me. And so does Peter's life. Fully restored, following Jesus.